welcome to jacklit educational channel so this is the sequence of the analytical technique of water quality parameters and this is the part 2 in which we are going to discuss some of the important parameters related to water quality assessment so those who haven't checked the previous part so you must check the previous part in order to know the basics for the water quality assessments so in the last class we have discussed about bod today we are going to know about cod so let's start today's video So the COD is neither call of duty nor cash on delivery so this means in water quality technique assessment chemical oxygen demand so this is the demand by the organisms which are inside the water body that is for example we are taking the water sample from this water body so we want to know how much amount of oxygen these organisms required to decompose the organic and inorganic constituent present in the waste water so in the last class we did about bod that was about to measure how much amount of oxygen needed to decompose the organic matter by the organisms in this video we will know how to calculate the oxygen required to decompose the organic and inorganic constituent so before that you should know certain important concept in order to know the steps which are required for cod so things to know is cod that is chemical oxygen demand is determined by the reflux method so this method can be open reflux method or closed reflux method so we will be discussing about the open reflux technique in this video and after that the titration technique is must so as i have said in order to calculate the dissolved oxygen or bod or cod titration procedure is a must so you should be having certain basics about the titration techniques in order to know about this cod assessment technique so let's see what is this reflux method so reflux method involves the heating of the chemical reaction so chemical reaction means the chemical which we are going to prepare by using the sample collected that is the water sample so this is the whole setup for the cod that is reflux method how to know so this part is called as the heating and stirrer portion that means from this two knob one will be giving the heat and one will be providing the stirring effect that is it will be shaking the chemical which are present in this container this container is known as round bottom flask so you should remember this one and this material is giving the heat from this help of heating and stirrer unit next thing is condenser so what is the use of this condenser so in this reflux method heating is given that means heat is provided to the chemical reaction to take place for a certain amount of time while continually cooling the vapor produced back into liquid from using a condenser so what will happen so if you are providing a heat to the chemicals present in this so obviously they will evaporate so the liquid will evaporate and what we have to do we have to bring back the liquid inside this flask because we need to analyze those chemicals from the water which we have collected so in order to bring back the evaporated water vapor we have to use a condenser so you know from condensation technique the water vapor is again transformed into the liquid form so you should know that this is the condenser part as you can see this part is the condenser so what it does is we should allow water inside the condenser so this water is not interrupting with the chemical present in it so this is outside you can see here so what happens we have to provide water there is the inlet of water here it will be attached to the water so then what will happen this water will be circulating inside the condenser so as it will circulate the heated up vapor it will condense because this water will cool down the vapor then what happens after this is circulated this will be out through the outlet so this the same water will be taken back to the sink with the help of outlet so its function is only to cool the vapor which are present from the chemical which are going through the heating effect so as it will condense so the all the chemical will come back again to the round bottom flask so that is the main work of the condenser so i hope you are clear now if you are having doubt you can ask me in the comment section the next thing is what is blank titration so blank titration means it is the kind of titration in which only water is taken instead of the sample solution so i will make you clear that in case of normal titration we used to take certain compound in the burette and our sample is taken in the conical flask along with other reagents and indicator but in case of blank titration we will take the distilled water not the sample water so in conical flask here you can see we will take distilled water all the reagents will be added but we have to 
take the distilled water instead of the sample which we are going to analyze that is the water sample so this is done why so this is done because to compare the ability of the normal water that is distilled water to decompose the organic and inorganic components present in the water with the water which is collected from the sample side so let's see how this thing will be carrying out that means what is the chemical reaction how to do the process for this reflux method so first what we have to do we have to pipette out 50 ml sample what sample the water sample which we have to analyze that is from the waste water mostly into a 500 ml flask so this is the round bottom flask we can say so it is having the capacity of 500 ml so we have to take 50 ml sample and we have to add in this then what you have to do we have to add one gram of hgso4 so this hgso4 why it is one gram because it is the powdered form of mercuric sulfate so you have to take one gram then we have to add few glass beads so why we have to add glass beads these are the glass beads are very important because they prevents bumping so bumping means the formation of superheated bubbles which may explode violently so as we are giving heat here this can explode the chemical reaction can explode to control this we have to add glass beads in this reaction of reflux technique so these are the questions which will be asked in the exam you should note it down why glass beads are used next is we have to add 5 ml of h2so4 reagent that is sulfuric acid reagent so you should mark here it is not written h2so4 it is written reagent so why it is written here that h2so4 reagent yes because it is not only considering sulfuric acid it is having 5.5 gram of ag2so4 that is silver sulfate in 1 liter of concentrated h2so4 so i repeat silver sulfate 5.5 gram in 1 liter of concentrated h2so4 will be able to make this h2so4 reagent then why this is used it is used to dissolve this hgso4 so this mercuric sulfate is the powder form as i said to dissolve this inside the sample of the water we have to add this h2so4 reagent then what we will do we have to add 25 ml of 0.25 normality k2cr207 so after that what we have to do we have to mix the solution that means the sample along with all the reagent then what we will do we have to attach the flask to the condenser and turn on the cooling water so all this process were carried out without attaching them at the round bottom flask to the heating mantle now what we will do we have to attach this flask along with the condenser and then turn on the cooling water that means we have to add the inlet water because it has to condense then what we have to do till now also we will not start the heating mantle so what we have to do then is we have to add remaining h2so4 reagent that is approximately 70 ml through the open end of the condenser so we can say through this end we have to add 70 ml of the h2so4 reagent and then we have to keep on swirling that means swirling means we have to open this knob for the stirring effect next what we have to do we have to keep a measure that means it is a caution that we should mix the reflex mixture thoroughly before applying heat to prevent local heating of flask bottom and a possible blowout of flask content so we should properly mix all this reagent along with the sample water then only we have to apply the heating effect that means we have to switch on the knob so what we will carry out the next step we will see so what we have to do we have to cover why we have to cover this open end because we don't want to include the foreign particles to interrupt our chemicals which are present in the round bottom flask and then what we have to do we have to keep on the heating mantle on for two hours so this will do the reflex that means heating effect of all the chemicals present in the water sample then after two hours we have to disconnect the reflux condenser so we have to take out this condenser and dilute the mixture what mixture the mixture which is present inside the round bottom flask along with the twice volume with distilled water so we have to add two times the amount of chemicals which will be present after reflux with the distilled water now we have to cool the chemicals at the room temperature and titration technique will start so titration method will start after this process and what we have to titrate so we have to take in the burette the ferrous ammonium sulfate that is standard solution of fas we have to take and what we have to take in the conical flask we have to take this conical flask along with the reflux agent which we have taken for the water sample and we have to add the ferroin indicator in the conical flask 
so why fairone indicator is added because when the color will change this indicator will indicate that that much amount of reaction has been taken place so what we have to see the color will change from the blue green color to the brick red so we have to remember this is also important the change in the titration technique the color will be from blue green to reddish brown or brick red then what we will do we have to run a blank so as we have known blank titration means we have to take the water that is distilled water instead of sample and we have to again repeat the same thing what we did with all the reagents so we have to repeat all this reflex technique as well as the titration technique with the help of distilled water instead of the water sample which we have collected so after that what we have to do after that it's very simple the calculation technique to find how much amount of oxygen is required to dissolve or decompose the amount of organic and inorganic components present in our water sample so what is the formula the formula is a minus b multiplied by m multiplied by 8000 divided by ml sample so we know what are these a b and m so a is the ml of fas that is ferrous aluminum sulfate we are using in the burette so how much ml of fas is used for the blank titration minus how much ml of fas is used for the sample that means water sample and next m is the molarity of fas we have taken what is the molarity of fas and 8000 means i have told you in the previous video that 8000 is actually 8 multiplied by 1000 and here 8 is what 8 is the equivalent weight of oxygen as we are calculating for oxygen required to decompose so 8 is the equivalent weight of oxygen that is atomic weight which is 16 divided by the valency which is 2 so 8 multiplied by 1000 will be giving this value which is standard and what is this ml sample so this ml sample means how much amount of sample we have taken for the purpose of sampling for the purpose of experiment so here what we have taken so we'll see we have taken pipetted out 50 ml sample so that means here also we will see that it will be 50 ml in the denominator so i hope you are clear till now if you are having doubt you can ask me in the comment section now we will go for the questions yes numericals are also important what kind of numericals are coming we will see and how to solve this so these are very easy as we have learned the formula for calculation so here the question is a 25 ml of CH water sample was refluxed with 10 ml of 0.25 normality of potassium dichromate solution the untreated dichromate requires 6.5 ml of 0.1 normality FAS and 10 ml of dichromate solution and 25 ml of distilled water under the same condition as sample required 27 ml of 0.1 normality of FAS so no need to worry if you are not able to understand the question we will directly go and see how to calculate the COD so COD formula we have known A minus B multiplied by M multiplied by 8000 divided by ML sample so here what we have to see is what is this A B M and how much ML of sample is collected what is the A that means how much ML of FAS that is ferrous ammonium sulfate is used for the blank titration so here it is given blank means I have told distilled water is taken so for distilled water 27 ml of FAS is consumed so we will write in place of A 27 next is B so what is B that ml of FAS used for titrating the sample which is important so that is 6.5 because it is written that for sewage water 6.5 ml of 0.1 normality FAS is consumed so in place of B we will write 6.5 next comes the m so what is the molarity of fas so as it has been written that 0.1 normality here both the places so normality or molarity will take here 0.1 then is 8000 we have to multiply divided by 25 why 25 because 25 ml of sewage water sample was refluxed that is the amount of refluxed unit of water sample taken so if we calculate all this thing the correct option the correct value will be 656 parts per million that is the amount of oxygen required to dissolve per liter of the water sample taken from the sewage water so i hope you are clear now now let's see in the last class we have done for the dissolved oxygen and bod so we'll take a numerical from the bod and see how to calculate if the question comes in exam so the question is assume that the dilution factor p as i have said p is the dilution factor in the last video of an unseeded mixture of wastewater is 0.03 so what is this unseeded mixture i have to tell you 
that unseeded means no additional microbes are added for taking out the reaction of dissolving the organic and inorganic compounds if some amount of microbes are added then it will be called as seeded mixture if you are adding additionally the microbes then it is called as seeded mixture so here it is given unseeded mixture so let's see and read the question completely so the p value is 0 0.03 initial do is given as 9 milligram per liter and after 5 days which is standard bod of 5 days the dissolved oxygen final value is 3 milligram per liter so we have to find what is the 5 day bod and here the reaction rate constant is given that 0 0.22 per day so let's see how to solve this kind of question as we have discussed in the last class the formula to calculate 5 day bod is dissolved oxygen initial minus dissolved oxygen final divided by the p value that is the dilution factor so here initial dissolved oxygen is 9 as given in the question minus 3 which is the final do divided by 0 0.03 which is the p value given in the question and we'll get the answer as 200 mg per liter as the bod so here option number 1 will be correct so you should mark here that here no need of k so k is just given to confuse you all no need of this reaction rate if you know the correct calculation technique for BOD. Now I will give you one question which is homework for you all. So you have to calculate this. So it is very simple and you have to tell me what will be the BOD value of the wastewater with the following data. So comment me in the comment section what will be the BOD 5 day value and we will go for further techniques and further concepts related to water quality monitoring. So till then like this video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed till now